In this video, I'm going to tell you guys about how my good friend, the road bicycle, helped me lose over 14 kilos and get me into terrific shape. We're going to take a ride up to my local mountain here and I'll tell you guys all about my experiences. Let's get into my road cycling story. So before I got into road cycling, I was really into strength training, lifting weights, squat, bench, deadlift. Uh, I did that from age 30 and I trained very hard four times a week, probably 10 hours a week in the gym. I always thought I was in great shape and I was pretty strong. I could squat 180 kilos, I could bench 135 kilos, deadlift 215 was my record. I always did pull-ups, dips, but usually weighted, never really for high volume. And then something happened, something that you guys are all familiar with. We, had, we got hit by the pandemic and all the gyms closed. Once the gyms closed, I had to look for alternative ways to train. So I started going hiking. I started playing sports. And all of a sudden I realized that all that time that I was spending in the gym lifting heavy weights did absolutely nothing for my physical conditioning. I would get winded fast. Uh, it just didn't work for me. I was so disappointed in myself. I spent four years training all the time. Spent so many hours in the gym. And yes, I had a lot of muscle. I was big, but I was fat too. And I wasn't conditioned because I used to believe that cardio is bad for strength training. What a myth. So when the gyms closed, I tried doing some stuff and then I got this idea. How do I maintain my squat strength? Why don't I buy a road bike? So that's exactly what I did. I bought myself a used road bike and I thought, okay, I'm gonna start cycling. My legs are really strong. I was squatting all the time and boy was I in for a shock. First time I went cycling, I was an absolute mess. A 15 or 20 minute bicycle ride completely destroyed me. And it's just very sad after training so long in the gym to realize that you're not actually fit at all. At the start of my cycling journey, I was 89 kilos. It doesn't sound like much, but you have to remember I'm 5'8", 173 centimeters. So I'm not that tall and close to 90 kilos is not a good weight. But I was very strong and all my friends were into powerlifting too. All the YouTubers that I watched were powerlifting YouTubers. So, I actually didn't know that I was overweight. It's an interesting phenomenon. It was an echo chamber. Everybody that I was watching, all the content that I was consuming was strength training related. And everybody was a little bit overweight. That's just the way it is. When you carry a little bit extra body fat, you're a lot stronger. It's easier to hit PR, PRs. And the way we measure our progress is more weight on the barbell. So couple of extra pounds of fat equals progress in the gym. It's a trap that I fell into, unfortunately. So 89 kilos, got myself a used road bike. I think I paid like $300, not very much. Just a used road bike that can get me started in this sport. And at first, I just started riding on the road, as you would expect. I was riding some flat terrain, maybe doing 30 kilometer rides, 40 kilometer rides. I slowly worked my way up to 100 kilometer rides. And I thought, okay, I'm doing pretty well. I can ride 100 kilometers in four hours. You know, average speed, 25 kilometers an hour. It's not so bad. I was really loving it too because when you're doing weightlifting, you're always training in the gym.
But this time, I'm only training outside. I started getting some color, getting tanned a little bit, feeling good, getting fresh air, getting outside. Just my mood, everything improved. It was excellent. And then one day, one of my friends, who's a personal trainer, he told me, Eugene, my grandmother can ride 100 kilometers on the flat. You're just wasting your time. You have to get into cycling up the mountain. I was like, excuse me? He said, yeah, we have a mountain here. It's a very popular local climb for cyclists. You gotta try it out. You think you're fit, you're strong at squats. Come join me one morning and we'll see what you're made of. So I said, okay, let's do it. I thought that it's gonna be easy. But was I in for a shock? Let me tell you guys about our local climb over here. So I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Here we have a very famous temple. It's called Doi Sutep. And this temple is on the top of a mountain that's overlooking the city. And to get to this temple, it's 10.7 kilometers and about 620 meters of elevation gain. So that's about 6% average gradient over the course of the run here. And me coming from Toronto, Canada, where it's pretty much flat, I've never ridden a bicycle up a hill in my life. I had no idea what to expect. On one fine morning, I decided to actually join my personal trainer friend. At this time, I was 34 years old. My friend is in his mid 40s. I thought that I'm just gonna crush this guy. I'm in way better shape. I'm much stronger than him on all the lifts. We met at the foot of the mountain and uh, we started riding together. Within a minute, he was gone. He simply said, Eugene, I don't have time for this. You're on your own. That's how out of shape I was. Somebody almost 10 years older than me completely crushed me right from the start of this climb. So I kept cycling up the mountain and I couldn't go more than five minutes without having to pull over, almost die, lie down, catch my breath. My heart rate was probably like 170, 160, 180. It was absolutely brutal. I could not make it all the way to the top, to Doi Setep. I could only make it about halfway, and it took me almost an hour, which is awful. So it was a very humbling experience for me. After this humbling experience, I realized that my friend was absolutely right. Cycling flats, sure, it will improve your fitness, but it's nothing compared to cycling up mountains. And it became my mission to be able to ride up to this temple, Doi Setep, in one shot without stopping. And it took me about a month to accomplish this goal. Weighing 89 kilos is quite a challenge. You have to remember that when you're climbing, gravity is the biggest factor. It's not aerodynamics. And being 89 kilos, it's quite a heavy guy, even though it was a lot of muscle. But that muscle also requires a lot of oxygen. So lots of muscle, very heavy, long climb, not a good mix. So I decided that two or three times a week, I'm gonna go up this mountain and I'm gonna try to go as high as I can each time. Hopefully going higher and higher. I literally use what I learned from lifting weights to progress my cycling. We're all familiar with progressive overload. You add a little bit of weight each and every time. So I decided to do that on the bicycle. Just go a little bit more, a little bit more until I could finally make it. And within three or four weeks, I was able to make it all the way to the temple. And my record at this time was one hour and 20 minutes from the bottom of the mountain to the temple without any stops. And it's pathetic. Right now, after cycling for a year or two, I can do it in 45 minutes without straining too hard. Over the next few months, I became completely obsessed with making PRs on this mountain. Uh, it's really cool because you can use apps like Strava, which track your time. And it's very objective, just like with strength training and weightlifting. 
So every time I would ride up the mountain, if I got a better time, I would have this nice reward. I did better, I improved. And I really like self-improvement. My records were getting faster and faster, and I started to drop weight too. Now remember, gyms are closed, so I can't work out. I didn't really discover calisthenics yet. All I did was just go cycling. And that's about it. So that was my only form of activity. And I would literally lose one or two kilos every week. I didn't try to restrict my calories. I would just cycle up this mountain two or three times a week and eat normally. But the calorie expenditure and the effort required at that time was just immense. So I kept losing weight. And most of it, I would say, was fat. I definitely lost some muscle, but probably because I wasn't training at the time. But it was 89, 88 kilos, 85 kilos, 83 kilos. Some of my lifting friends started saying, Eugene, you're so small now. I said, sure, but I'm so much more conditioned than you guys. That's what I care about now. I bought the bicycle in May of 2021. And by September of 2021, I went down from 89 kilos to 78 kilos without paying any attention to my diet. At the time, I would order pizza, eat burgers, anything to try to not lose my muscle from the gym being closed. But it didn't matter. I was just burning so many calories cycling up the mountain two or three times a week. And I was starting to look better and better. Uh, you could finally see some abs. And I think the biggest thing is the face. When you're a little bit overweight, especially me, everybody carries their fat in different places. But for me, I carry my fat on my face. So I start to get the moon face. And I didn't realize at the time because everybody I knew and all the people I watch on YouTube also had the moon face. But once I lost these 13, 14 kilos and uh, I was able to see my face, I was like, wow, what a difference. Was it really worth it to look like that so that I could squat 180 kilos but have awful fitness levels? I don't think so. Now, it was definitely fun and worth it at the time, but that's just because I didn't know the trade-off that I was making. I didn't realize. In the summer of 2022, my friend and I decided to do a cycling trip, a very challenging cycling trip. It was gonna be a six day trip. It's called the Mehan Song Loop here. In this trip, you cycle about 500 kilometers and gain 11,000 meters in elevation. So over five days, you cycle more than Mount Everest in elevation. And even though at this point I've been cycling for a year and a half maybe, I was in very good shape but I was not in good enough shape for this challenge. And I had to make a sacrifice. The sacrifice was to drop leg training at the gym. I know. <laughs> you can imagine how I felt after being completely obsessed with leg training for the past five years. The, the squat rack was my temple, man. I used to go there, just give it all I got. I would get PRs, it would make me feel great. It was my little escape. But there was a new goal. The goal was to ride this Mehan Song Loop. And with squat training, sorry cup, with squat training, I could not get enough cycling volume and recover. So in September of 2022, I completely stopped all leg workouts in the gym and I completely stopped lifting weights, period. Because I didn't want to interfere with my recovery. Now, I didn't want to lose my physique either, so I started training calisthenics. Just basic push-ups, pull-ups, dips, uh, things like that, leg raises, the most basic stuff. But I would just listen to my body. Having five, six years of lifting experience, I knew when the workout was enough. And doing something simple like three, four sets just wasn't enough. So I would have to do 10 sets. I would have to rest short periods of time. And thankfully, all the conditioning that I acquired from cycling gave me the ability to train this way. So 
no squats, no bench, no lifting weights, nothing at all. I went down from 78 kilos to about 76, 75 kilos. Calisthenics for the upper body, cycling for the lower body. Now, you would think that I would completely lose the mass off my legs, but not really. My legs looked great. They actually look better than I was squatting all the time. Maybe because I'm mostly climbing, so there's quite a lot of torque, a lot of force going through the muscles. My cadence is not very high. So my legs were getting a very decent workout. My cardiovascular system was getting an amazing workout too. And ultimately I was just losing fat. Every time I would get, go cycling, I would usually do it fasted. Unless it was a really big ride, then I would eat. But I would go faster in the morning, cycle before work, then eat for the rest of the day. And yeah, I lost a lot of fat. I got very, very fit. I managed to stop going to the gym and I look better now that I don't go to the gym than when I used to go to the gym. All of this, thanks to my wonderful friend here, the road bike, what a great tool. Such a great tool, completely transformed my life. So that's my cycling story. Nowadays, I cycle maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, just to maintain my fitness levels. I go hiking too. Um, sometimes I'll do some calisthenics, leg training, but it's really not fun. You have to do a lot of volume to feel anything, get very, very sore the next day. So this right here is my preferred form of leg training, cycling up the mountain. I'll post my Strava link in the description if anybody else cycles wants to check out the kind of rides that I'm doing. Well, I'm going to continue this ride here. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your day and take it easy.